This is Tristan with Victris Games. Hello and welcome back. This is the ninth video in our series on how to make a game with GDevelop, the 2D open source game engine. In this video, we will add two additional levels to our game. The first level will change the positions and angles of the obstacles. And the second will add moving obstacles that the player has to dodge. Before we do that, let's take a minute and talk about game design. You may have noticed in the games that you play that the first levels often have similar traits. They usually are low difficulty and include only a small portion of the enemies and challenges in the game. Your player may not even have access to all the abilities during this first level. The reason for this is because the first level has many important tasks to accomplish. The first level needs to help players learn which object on the screen represents the player. How do they control that player? What objects on the screen should be avoided? And some general idea of the purpose that the player is supposed to do. Some games teach the user these things by adding a cutscene or a text-driven tutorial. However, I think the best games let the player learn the same way they do in the real world, by interacting with the world. For example, in the first level of the original Super Mario Bros., the player starts on the left side of the screen, there is no immediate danger, so the player can try moving around and pushing buttons. They soon learn about power-ups, how to avoid enemies, jump over obstacles, and of course, the short-term goal of always moving to the right. Let's take a look at our first level to see what the game is telling the player. There is a timer, but it doesn't start automatically, which lets the player take their time looking around at the different elements on the screen. When they see the arrow keys, it helps them know the control of the game. And lastly, the big letters suggest to them that they can start by crossing the checkered line. So I think our first level does a good job of teaching the user how to get started playing this game without any text-driven tutorial needed. Now what should we do for our next levels? We could simply change the numerical values of the first level, such as changing the number of obstacles or the speed that the player moves. This is not a bad strategy, but I'm confident that you can implement that using the knowledge you already have. Instead, I'm going to try modifying the obstacles in more substantial ways. For level two, let's try moving the obstacles into random positions and angles so that the level feels less structured and will require more precise navigation by the player. When creating new levels, there's a couple of different ways to do it. One way is to create a new scene for each level. You can just duplicate your existing scene. Now you've got another scene that you can start working with and it has all your objects in it. The other way is what we're gonna do in this game and that is to do everything in a single scene. In order to do this, we're going to have to introduce a new type of variable which is called a global variable. So far, all the variables we've talked about are scene variables and that means that they will be remembered until the scene restarts or changes. Our method is going to be to restart the same scene, but to increase the global variable for the current level. Let's do that under the initialize game event group. Let's move these events for our obstacle creation under a condition that checks the current level. We're going to check for the global variable value, current level, and we will check if it is level one. So if the game starts and it sees that the variable is one, it will use the logic that we have already created. The problem with this logic is that we've never defined this global variable before. So when the game starts up for the first time, the current level will be zero and it will never get to level one. We can do a quick fix for that. We'll just check if it equals zero and we'll set it to one. Let's keep going and do our level two. I'm going to copy and paste level one and we'll change this to level two and I'm still going to create the obstacles. I think I'll even keep the same numbers but instead of deleting 50% of the objects let's rotate them so for our action we will click on the obstacle choose angle the value can be between 0 and 360 degrees, which is a full circle. So we can use a random function. We'll use random in range. It takes a starting number and an end number. So we'll do 0 here and 360 here. So this will pick a whole number between 0 and 360. Since we want to test level 2, let's change this top event to 2. This will be like our starting level. 
That looks pretty good. Let's try moving them to random positions as well. Just modify the Y position and we're going to add a random number. We will add between zero and 500 pixels in the Y direction. Let's test that. We need to make our obstacles get higher up. Let's change their Z value. The position sure does look random though, doesn't it? Let's create the obstacles on Z value of 50. Um, we'll do that for both level one and level two. Um, I don't want obstacles to cover my start sign, so I'm going to try reducing this from 31 rows to 30 rows. There we go. Now they will be random. I don't know, I'm a little OCD, so I don't like the idea of them being random angles. Let's try setting them at 45 degree increments. So instead of choosing random in range, let's do random with step. So this has three number inputs. It's a starting and an end, and then this is how much you step by. So we can still do our zero and 360, but if we set this to 45, then they will only be set to 45 degree increments. Now let's see if they look a little cleaner. I guess I like this a little nicer than just a completely random angle, so I'll leave it like this. Okay, so we have created level two. However, we don't have a way for the level one to turn into level two. We need to detect when the player crosses the finish line in level one or any level. So let's detect when the player crosses the finish line. So when the player Y value goes less than the finish line. When that happens, we want to move to the next level. So we're going to change the global variable, add one to it, and then we'll restart the scene. Change the scene, and you can manually set a scene here, but if you do that, if you ever change the name of your scene, this logic could get broken. Instead of statically saying the name, let's choose current scene name. Let's get to the end of our level and see if our level one goes to level two. We'll make sure our starting level is level one. Okay, here we are at the end. Let's see what happens. All right, it took us to the beginning. Let's see if it looks like level two. There we go. We have our randomly placed objects for level two. So what should we do for level three? I thought it would be fun to add moving obstacles to level three. It's actually not very hard to do. To create our moving obstacles, let's start by duplicating our existing obstacle. This will make sure it has the same behaviors and effects already assigned to it. I want to color these blue, but I can't just edit this one because it's actually going to be the same file name referenced by the other obstacle. To get around that, we'll just add an animation and we'll edit it with Piskel. We'll choose a blue color and resize it. We'll delete the original one. And so they will look like this. However, they're not moving yet. We can easily make them move by adding a behavior to them. Let's use an extension I made called Rectangular Movement. We can actually install it by double clicking on the object, going to Behaviors, Add Behavior to the object, and click on Search New Behaviors. Rectangular Movement. So now it's installed, but we still need to add it. Here it is. This extension can move in a lot of different ways. It can actually make your object go in a rectangle shape. 
it can go in a constant speed where it just doesn't slow down at the corners. By default, if you leave this off, it'll slow down at the corners and it's a nice realistic look. If we take off the vertical speed and distance, it will just go back and forth horizontally. Let me show you what it looks like by default. Let's take off all of the vertical speed and distance and hit apply. So we're going to create level three. I'll just copy and paste. Now we'll work on level three. And we don't want six columns, so we only need the single column. Instead of starting them at the left side of the road, Let's start them in the middle of the road. We can use the center X function to find the center of the ground object. We got to change our, our starting level to three. Okay, they're on the scene, but they're not moving enough. Let's set their horizontal distance. And we'll set this to the width of the ground object. And let's delete this test object I put here. Let's modify the origin of the moving obstacle so that it's a little easier to place. We can edit points here and we'll just move the origin to the same place as the center, which is going to be 64 and 32. So now when this is created, the placement will be based off the center. We have our moving obstacles, but they all move at the exact same speed. Let's try setting that to a random value. So we'll set the horizontal speed to random in range 50 and 300. I think this is good. However, I like it if they were closer together. So instead of 600 pixels between rows, let's change it to 300 so they'll be twice as close. We'll also need to increase this. Let's change it to 56 rows. Let's see how this feels. Okay, it's pretty good. However, I want the obstacles to stop moving left and right after they've run into the player. That's easy to do. We'll just have to edit our player hits an obstacle logic. So we already have an event for when the player collides with the obstacle. However, we're specifically talking about the moving obstacles. So let's just copy and paste this and change players colliding with a moving obstacle. And we'll still play our sound file, but we're also going to deactivate the rectangular movement behavior. So if we type behavior, you can activate or deactivate. And we will choose the rectangular movement, activate no. So when we hit this moving obstacle, it'll stop moving left and right. works perfect. One thing I noticed, you lose track of how fast you're moving because there's no reference points. I want to add some obstacles back into the level that will be another visual reference of how fast we're moving. So for level three, I'm going to actually copy the same logic that we use for level one. But instead of putting them inside the road, let's just do two columns, so left and a right. We want to create them to the left of the ground object, so let's scoot these over 128 pixels. Let's change the distance between rows to be the width of the ground. We also should delete the random angle and random position logic. Man, I'm 
I'm a horrible driver, but I made it through. Everything's looking really nice, but I think it would be helpful for the player to see what level they're on. So let's add a uh, text up here. I'll scoot down these objects. I'm going to duplicate the time text. Let's change the placeholder. I'll put this over here. And of course we need logic to change that text. And that only needs to happen once at the beginning of the level. So I'll just add a new logic here at the bottom. We'll change the current level text. So this is a global variable current level. We also want to show the text level. And we'll use the plus sign, which connects these two strings. Okay, I'm going to try a full run through from level one to three. Okay, we made it to level four. I'm not going to create level four, but you should go ahead and try maybe making something new. This game is very close to being complete, but in the next video, we're going to add some juice to it, including screen shake, particle effects, and a shadow clone effect, which I think you'll really like. If you're finding these videos valuable, please give a like and subscribe. And if you want to see what else I'm working on, follow me at Victorious Games on Twitter. And lastly, you are welcome to join us on our Discord server. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.